any of you who have made your way through the remembrance of things past, Proust's enormous novel about fin de siècle life in Paris, there are thoughts uttered there that are so fragile and delicate that when you read it, you think you were the only person who ever thought this. And you never bothered to mention it to anybody because it seems so ineffable. And yet, Proust has gotten it down on the page. So it, it shows you what human beings are. And of course, our world, pardon? Can you give an example of that? <laughs> I'm trying to think of an example. There's an example where they're going to a beach town and he's riding with this dowager woman, a great society woman, and he's watching the trees go by the carriage, and he notices that, uh, now how does this work, that the nearer trees move faster than the trees further away, and then over this Spatial metaphor is mapped, a uh, temporal metaphor about people changing in time. And, you know, God knows what it is in French, but even in English, it's this exquisitely complicated thought that you wouldn't think anybody could actually do justice to the feeling, and, then, and yet there it is uh, in its completion. Uh, the other f great friend of the imagination is uh, travel. Travel is the way to is another way, a more gentle way, to break down cultural conditioning. I mean, what we call culture shock is when you go to Afghanistan or Albania and you realize that your expectations of how a table should be set, what a toilet looks like, uh, how a bus ticket works, and how a telephone is supposed to operate were just so narrowly defined that now you're confronted with a telephone and a toilet and you don't even know which end is which. Uh, uh, and it's not for nothing that the vocabulary of psychedelic experience has borrowed from the vocabulary of travel. So we take a trip, we have a journey, we go to an alien landscape. Uh, uh, and then finally, uh, the, the great friend of the imagination is uh, the future. Because it's in the future that we place our hopes, our fears, our suppositions. I mean, the future is a land of things imagined, things that have not yet undergone the formality of actually occurring. Yeah. As a friend of the imagination? Well, I, did I not mention last night that the two great motivators were food fantasies and sex fantasies? And yes, uh, the sexual imagination is at a very early, I almost said primitive, but I don't mean that, but I mean early level because if I'm understanding you correctly, it revolves around the if operator. Uh, if I approach the desirable female with the proper blandishments, if, and then of course, just sexual fantasy. Then we will do this, then we will do that, and so forth and so on. It certainly is a vehicle for altered states, whether I would call them imagination or not. I suppose I would, but now that I'm thinking about your question, I think you know there are pitfalls in the imagination. And probably the sexual pitfall is um, sentimentality. Uh, well, tastelessness is in there, too. Sentimentality is a virulent form of tastelessness. Uh, <laughs> and uh, sentimentality is, is very hard to root out. You may think you're a hard cookie, 
but I'll bet there are areas of sentimental delusion so broad and deep in every one of us. And some people carry that to the grave. They're the lucky ones. The rest of us have divorces, bankruptcies, muggings, and what have you, and slowly our sentimentality <laughs> is pounded out of us. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it's a good thing to lose sentimentality because it's a false aesthetic. And I think we recognize it. It's also a very easily manipul. It, it is truly a false aesthetic in the hands of modern media because it, it is a, a great uh, ploy for buying. If you can induce sentimentality in people, they will buy the object of that induction. Um, yeah. Well, your word of ide your word idealism is good here because it brings me to something I always eventually get to, which is in line with this thought, culture is not your friend. Ideology is not your friend. And ideology, some people think what we're trying to do here is sort out good ideologies from bad. Should I be a Marxist? Should I be a deconstructionist and the answer is no none of the above all ideologies are uh, viral infections of some sort M mimetic infections that erode your functionality and your comfort with yourself ideologies set up polarities that are based on discontent and ideologies are always, always, always based on false premises. Whatever the, I mean, name an ideology and I'll tell you the false premises that it's based on. So, uh, part of this process of cultural maturity that I've been talking about is to get beyond ideology without embracing cynicism. It's not a fuck you thing. It's a deeply saddening awareness that we are not yet angel enough that we should take ourselves that seriously. Yeah. Yes, I would say sentimentality is the feeling of attachment we have to our ideologies. So, for instance, someone says, well, you know, Marxism, maybe we didn't have the right answer, but we certainly had a sense of a mission and a wonderful, you know, we knew who we were and, well, that's crazy talk. You know, if it was wrong, it was wrong. I mean, it's like old Nazis sitting around the thing, the great old days, you know. <laughs> what was so great about the old days? You want community? Join a bowling league, for crying out loud. Yeah. No, that that's a sub that's a that's a lesser evil. That's nostalgia. Yeah. Another impulse for marketing frenzy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but romanticism I think is a legitimate impulse and well situated in historical context and so forth and so on. Sentimentality can break out anywhere, any time and and is you know, can find anything for for its object. Sentimentality is a, a lazy form of thinking, I think. You know, people people don't want to think the hard thoughts. And yet, I find the hard thoughts very paradoxically liberating. For instance, here is a hard thought. Uh, I don't want anybody to burst into tears on me, so gird your loins. But, uh, uh, you know, I've spent a lifetime taking drugs, knocking around the world, having affairs, being married, being unmarried, this, that, and the other. If somebody asked me, so what do you know? What have you learned? Uh, I would have to say what I've learned is uh, that nothing lasts. There's a hard thought. Is, is that a cause for joy or despair? 